So thank you all for being here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dive a little bit deeper. You know, one of the things that's really interesting is what you see going on in the world of e-commerce today is a, a new challenge being presented to, to businesses. They're trying to address how customers want to interact with them, and whether it's a B2C customer or a B2B customer. And it's, as Zach alluded to, it's impossible to predict every way that these customers are going to want to interact. And so from that perspective, we're going to put up some slides here that are actually going to be software architecture slides, which is usually about the point where the audience goes to sleep. But we'll try and express the importance of these things. Um, when you look at sweet commerce, the core thing that we've done is we've built upon the foundation of the idea that everything you need to run your business is already resident within NetSuite. And when all of your data is resident within NetSuite, it actually empowers you to expose that data to your customers, your partners, and your vendors in whatever way is most appropriate. So it's built directly on top of the ERP, CRM, and multiple currency and tax um, modules that were built into NetSuite. One of the things that NetSuite built out about five years ago was what we called the Suite Cloud Platform. And the idea behind the Suite Cloud Platform was NetSuite was going to build out a system that was a great starting point for our customers, but every business is unique. And the idea behind the Suite Cloud Platform is to take the starting point system that NetSuite gives you and customize it to your exact needs. The thing that was lacking previously was that that Suite Cloud Platform wasn't exposed to the external website. So you could make all the customizations you wanted to on the back end of your business, but on the front end of the web store, there were some decisions we had made for you that were impossible to reverse. And so, or I should say difficult to reverse. So the Suite Cloud Platform, extending that so that it was the foundation of the e-commerce business going forward was one of the biggest changes that we made. But the thing that was great about that was you guys have probably all lived through rolling out first versions of technology in your past. And sometimes version ones work great and sometimes they don't. The great part about building on the Suite Cloud Platform is it's mature, it's tested, and it's scalable technology that's been in production for at least five years. On top of the, the Suite Cloud Platform, we built what we call Suite Cloud Commerce APIs. So a lot of the most common functions that you need to do in order to perform commerce. The transaction is part of that, um, but having items in your cart is another piece, support cases. There are a variety of different aspects to doing business with external audiences that previously hadn't been opened up to the back end platform. And so we opened those up with the Suite, commerce, uh, the Suite Cloud Commerce APIs. Now, the place where it really starts to get interesting and where we really start to differentiate, I think, versus a traditional system where you're building commerce on top of it is this next layer, the Suite Commerce Services. And the Suite Commerce Services, basically what they do is they allow you guys to expose to your customers, your partners, and your vendors data in whatever manner it is that you want. So the thing that's really interesting when you take a look at this, and NetSuite in particular versus a traditional ERP system, is, as Zach alluded to, a traditional ERP system is built with the idea that the security is based upon a firewall. You put the software in place, and if you're inside the firewall, you can get to it, and if you're outside the firewall, you can't. The problem with commerce is anyone in the world you want to be able to come to your site and be able to buy things from you, to interact with your brand. And so if you're building on top of the previous generation's architecture, Opening up a set of services that allow anyone in the world to access that backend data is fraught with peril because the system wasn't designed for security. So NetSuite, having been built from the start with the idea that your data lives in the cloud and built from the start with the idea that that needs to be exceptionally secure through very sophisticated roles, permissions, login information, allowed us to open up these services without putting the core operational, the crown jewels of the operational data that you're running at risk. So these services were built using SuiteScript, which is our customization language, and they're built to, design, to, to expose a variety of the most common commerce functionality to your, to your customers. So being able to expose your product catalog, being able to expose your cart, being able to expose logins and permissions so that people are only accessing the data that they're able to. Um, but the thing that's really important is as we built out this new set of services that'll allow your, that allow your business to become a cloud business, we actually built them out using SuiteScript, which is part of the, the Suite Cloud platform. And the reason that that's really important is it means that the decisions that we've made in terms of how we've exposed these services are decisions that can be changed by you guys. So none of the decisions that we're making are irreversible. And I'll give you a great example of, of how this plays out in the real world. So we have a customer that sells software globally. And they decided that they didn't want people who were based in the UK to be able to buy using euros. 
and they didn't want people who lived in Europe to be able to buy using British pounds because what they saw were currency fluctuations. And their customers were smart and were figuring out, oh, okay, this week it's cheaper for me to buy using pounds, and other times it's cheaper for me to buy using euros. In the old world and a traditional e-commerce system, that's a very difficult thing to implement. So probably there was no expectation that that, that was ever something that was going to need to be customized. And then on top of that, if you were dependent upon a company like NetSuite to build that out, you were probably going to be waiting for quite a while. Because I can tell you that the, the rate at which e-commerce is evolving, there are a lot of other things that we're getting a lot more requests for than something unique to that business. Using the new architecture that we put in place for our checkout, it was actually something that was very, very easy for our customer to implement themselves. So all they had to do is put in a little conditional logic that said, if the country that you're shipping the product to is based in the UK, then require British pounds. If not, reject the transaction. So it's a great example of where the, the customization architecture and these sweet commerce services allow every business to differentiate based upon the, the aspects that are most important to them. So for some companies, it's going to be the design of the website or the brand or the customer experience. For others, it's going to be around how orders get processed or where they get fulfilled from. For others, it's going to be something like enforcing currency rules. But the, the important piece is that you're able to do that in the new platform. I think another equally important aspect of this is this is an architecture that allows our partners to build on top of our platform. So if you want to change some of the default functionality in the, in the world of NetSuite, you have the full capability to go in and do that. Um, in a second, you're going to actually see a demonstration from uh, Brandon Jenkins from Retail Anywhere, who's one of our point of sale providers. This is an architecture that would allow basically anyone to go out and build a point of sale solution on top of the NetSuite platform using the same core functionality for exposing the product catalog that you're using for your website. So you implement business logic rules once in the service layer, and every customer touch point and every transaction channel that you have is able to use that one implementation of that logic. On top of these services, we're providing what we believe to be an industry-leading starting point store. And so this is a sweet commerce experience. So Zach talked briefly about the explosion of devices and customer touch points. Um, iPhones, iPads, Amazon introduced the Kindle, um, Android devices. All of these different devices are all used to access your website. And so one of the challenges is, how do you serve all of these different devices without having to spin up a separate website for each of these different, um, each of these different types of devices? So Sweet Commerce Experience, as I said, we believe is going to be the leading platform for e-commerce. It's built using what are called responsive design principles. So responsive design basically means you create one set of code, it intelligently looks at the capabilities of the device from which somebody's connecting to it, and adapts to those capabilities. So you have one set of code that allows an iPhone user to connect to the site. The same set of code allows an iPad user to connect to the site or a laptop user. And it intelligently adapts. The reason that's really important is the alternative is that you go down the path of supporting each of those different devices using different sites, and you need to staff up to manage and maintain all of those different sites. So sweet commerce experience using these responsive design principles is really important. That said, while a web browser is still by far the most common e-commerce transaction channel. There are many brands out there that are looking at things like iPhone applications, iPad applications. For business to business applications where you're ordering from the same customer or from the same vendor on a day to day basis, they're actually going to make your job a lot easier if they're going to provide you with an iPad application that allows you to have all of your information resident and order on an ongoing basis. So our architecture is designed with the idea that we can't possibly anticipate all the future interaction channels that you'll have with your customers. So we're providing you with a great starting point web store based upon a browser. But if you want to build an iPhone, iPhone application or a point of sale application, you basically stop using the sweet commerce experience front end, or you could use it in parallel with whatever other interaction channel you want and reuse those core sweet commerce services that I talked about previously. Last thing to say is that your web store is typically the front end of your brand. And your web store isn't always necessarily just about transactions. And so those brand interactions need to be pixel perfect. Customers come to your site, and the first thing they do is they look and say, does this represent the brand that I want? Is this, is this a site that looks like it's a company that I should trust? Because in many cases, it's the first time they interact. So the new sweet commerce experience architecture allows pixel perfect control so there are no decisions that we've made in terms of the type of design that you're going to have on your site that you can't then turn around and change. 
So what does this all mean? So Zach talked a little bit about NetSuite's founding principles were a single system to help you run your business better. Basically what we've done is created a comparable situation on the front end of your web store. So you can go from the process of attracting your first customer, which you can do using a variety of marketing capabilities that are built into NetSuite, including email marketing, and getting them to arrive at the site. And then at the point that they arrive at the site, because you're using the same system to serve the e-commerce site as you used for email marketing, you know who they are, you know what products they're interested in. And as they're going through the shopping experience, you actually know things about them, like are they a B2B customer or are they a B2C customer? So you're able to do things like presenting customer-specific pricing, which is very important in a B2B context. But you're not forcing them to, you're not forcing yourselves to go down a path of having separate websites for B2B versus B2C. Because at the end of the day, business to business customers expect and hope for as great an experience as you provide B2C customers. So then at the point that you transact, you can transact using any way that's appropriate to your business. So whether it's via invoice, whether it's via credit card, whether it's via credit memo. All of those things are resident within NetSuite, and so instead of having to have a separate transactional system from your back-end system, all of, the, all of that information and capability is there. And then finally, and the piece that gets overlooked far too often in the world of traditional e-commerce, is the experience from the time the customer submits the Buy Now button to the time they actually get the product. And this is where NetSuite's heritage as an operational system really shines through. So when there are issues with an order, you know, maybe for whatever reason a shipment doesn't arrive from one of your suppliers and you need to contact your customer, the integrated order management capabilities with e-commerce make all of those systems flow much more seamlessly. Because those are the kinds of things that create customer frustration and inefficiency in an organization. And what you'll hear when you talk to NetSuite customers across the board is, you guys have allowed our, our business to operate more efficiently. We took three people and we actually were able to reassign them from fulfilling orders into a role where they were customer facing and they were able to produce greater revenue. So the order to delivery piece is a really important piece of what we bring to the table that I think makes NetSuite unique versus what anyone else can do from a commerce perspective.